Okay. Now we're going to talk about physical methods. When we talk about physical, you're going to have to say the target, whether it's silo or static, broad or narrow, but antiseptic and disinfectant doesn't apply to the physical methods. Okay. So in, in your table, when we talk about the four physical methods, you can just put NA under antiseptic or disinfectant. Is that okay? But then when we get to the chemical methods, then that's when you need to know antiseptic or disinfectant. Is that good? Now here's my trick for this one. When I took the class, I just remember looking at people and they had a million flashcards for this section. They're like heat, cytostatic, broad and narrow, and flashcards for everything. I'll tell you right now how to make your life so much easier. You only have to memorize one thing. If you know the target, you can figure out everything else, okay? So I'm gonna kinda try to make you guys think that way. You just have to memorize the target. And if you memorize the target, you can think, oh, with this target, will it kill it or will it inhibit it? Do all bacteria and viruses have this thing or only bacteria or only viruses? Okay, so I'll walk you through it, but that's how I want you guys to try to think because it'll make your life so much easier than having to memorize four things. You just have to memorize one. You don't get confused and stressed and, okay, deal? Okay, let's go. What's the first physical method you need to know? Heat. Heat. And there are two different kinds of heat. Dry heat. Yeah, so we have dry heat and moist, moist heat. Which one's more destructive? Moist. Have you ever put your hand over a pot of boiling water, pot, a pot of boiling <laughs> water, and then put your hand like the oven? Which one's hotter? The boiling water. Because it holds heat better, the water molecules. It's so like autoclaves, that's why we pump in water and steam, because it gets a lot hotter. Okay, what do you always think of first? Target. The target. What's the target of heat? Proteins. Pro proteins. Now a lot of people, I even had trouble with this when I was in the class. When I heard the word proteins, I was like, okay, where have I heard of proteins before? In the peptidoglycan, right? So I was like, oh, well, I guess it's affecting the cell wall. And that's all I thought, like, because now I'm going to ask you, is it cellular or static? And you're like, well, it's affecting the tetrapeptide interbridges, remember, in the peptidoglycan? And it's kind of confusing. Don't get confused. Proteins are in the entire cell. It's what makes the whole cell fit together. It's like the glue of the cell. Okay, you are all proteins too. So if I, when you target proteins, you're basically disintegrating what holds the cell together. So do you think that'll be cytal or static? Cytal. Okay. I'm just going to write C slash S. It's cytal. Okay, what's the definition of broad versus narrow for a physical method? Yeah, so broad means bacteria and viruses, narrow means bacteria or viruses. So if I have a protein target, do you think it's going to be broad or narrow? Why do you say that? There's proteins on viruses. Yeah, because bacteria have proteins, right? Do viruses have proteins? Yeah, so it's broad. Do you kind of see what I'm trying to make you do? Mm -hmm. Just by knowing the target, does it make sense how we could figure out everything else? Yeah. Instead of having to memorize heat, proteins, heat, cytal, heat, broad. You can remember heat, proteins, like, oh, if I target proteins, it's going to disintegrate the cell, cytal. Do bacteria have proteins? Yes. Do viruses have proteins? Yes. So it's broad. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. As you do more, it'll make more and more sense because we get more examples. But trust me, this will just help. <laughs> I see people try to do it and it's kind of sad because it's a lot of work. Okay, what's another one? Another physical method? Radiation. Radiation. There are two kinds of radiation. There are two kinds. Ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing and non-ionizing. Which one's m more harmful? Ionizing is. Do you guys know examples of ionizing radiation? X-rays. X-rays, gamma rays, stuff that you don't want <laughs> to be exposed to. What about non-ionizing? 
like UV light. It's not as big of a deal. Still does damage, but it's not as bad. Okay, what's the target? Nucleic acid. Now, I'll probably have to explain it first, this first time, but if I'm targeting nucleic acid, do you think it'll be cytal or static? What did you say? Cidal. It was like cytal or something <laughs> like that. Cytal, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, the first time they hear it, they don't know if it's cytal or static. It's cytal. Well, because it's like breaking, like, nucleic acid is like your DNA and RNA, right? Yeah. So it'd be disrupting all your proteins again. Exactly, right? because what is the point of having DNA? To make proteins. To make proteins and to make enzymes, enzymes that make ATP so I can move my leg, enzymes that break down bad proteins, enzymes that make me be able to function. Mm -hmm. But if I can't make those enzymes, then you're going to die. Okay? So anytime, anytime you see a nucleic acid target, cytal. Don't even think about it. Okay? And it's going to come up two more times. There are two antibiotics that are nucleic acid. And guess what? They're both cytal. Okay? Now, broad and arrow. Broad. broad why do you say that? Because yeah, bacteria have nucleic acid, viruses have nucleic acid, so it's broad. I will tell you, you're probably thinking, wow, this is super easy. It does get harder, okay? But this is good practice to get your mind thinking this way. Is that okay? All right, next section. Any questions on that one? Filtration. Filtration, this one's fun. <laughs> Okay, what would you say is the target for filtration? None. Yeah, it doesn't really apply because think about the targets we listed, cell membrane, cell wall. When you filter something, are you like, oh, I'm only going to let the cell wall go through or, oh, I'm only going to let the nucleic acid go through. You don't do that, right? You remove the whole microbe. So it's not applicable. You're just removing the whole thing. Is that okay? Cytal or static? Again, it doesn't really apply. Because are you doing anything to it? Mm -hmm. No, you're just removing it. It's not an A. Broad or narrow? Broad. Oh. Is it not applicable? It no, it has one. It's it's broad, broad, it, it is broad. Um, just most filters aren't small enough to catch viruses because viruses are so small but if you want to catch viruses you can make holes small enough so we consider it to be broad is that okay so you can make holes small enough all right last one osmotic pressure do a really a uh, quick review. What is osmotic pressure? The water balance in the cell. Yeah, the balance of water. So if you remember this sentence, water follows salt. Okay? So if I have a lot of salt on the outside of the cell, where is the water going to go? On the outside. Go out, right? What's going to happen to the cell? It'll shrink. Shrink up, and what is that called? Hyper. Hypertonic. Yep. Now if I have a lot of salt on the inside of the cell, where's the water going to go? Inside. It's going to go inside. What's hap going to happen to the cell? Hypotonic. I think hypo, I think big O, so it swells up. Okay. And then what's it called if it's happy, if there's the equal? What? Isotonic. Okay. So we know that bacteria like to be isotonic, so we try to make them hypertonic or hypotonic to kill them. Okay. There are two ways to change osmotic pressure that you need to know. What are they? Freeze drying. Freeze drying. Give me an example of where you've seen freeze dried food. You have food storage, the little potatoes and the banana chips and all that. Those are freeze dried. Also, I'm from Florida, right next to NASA, space food. Oh, yeah. That's all freeze dried. Okay. Why? What does free, what's the difference between the banana chips and the banana? You remove the water. Remove the water. Now, if there are bacteria on the banana, what happens to them? They die because they don't have water. Yeah, it removes the water from them, too, making them 
Hypertonic. Hypertonic. And they died, right? So that's freeze drying. What's another one? One that you may have been exposed to in Brazil. I don't know how. Sugar uh, salt curing. Curing. I don't know how. What's the word? Primitive where you were was. But curing, they do this in foreign countries that don't have access to a refrigerator. What they do is they put a ton of salt and sugar on top of their meat. And okay. they don't put the meat in the refrigerator. Now, how do they do that? Is the salt just for, like, flavor? What is that? Is that going to dry it up, too? Yeah, because think, if there's a lot of salt on the outside of the it's bacteria, gonna water's going to go out, making the bacteria hypertonic, right? So they don't have to use a refrigerator, okay? So what is the target? Yeah, there's not really a target, okay? Because you're targeting the water, really. So just remember NA. Cidal or static? Cidal. It kills them if they don't have water. Broad or narrow? Narrow. Why do you say narrow? Yeah, viruses don't have osmotic pressure. They don't care how much water they have. They're like dirt, really, okay? So it's, whenever you say narrow, it's not good enough to say narrow. You have to say narrow to bacteria, because it only affects bacteria. It doesn't affect viruses. So on your test, if he gave osmotic pressure changes as a way to kill something, it would only work against your bacterial diseases. It wouldn't work against your viral diseases. Is that okay? And those are the four physical methods. Not too bad. There's only one that kind of is weird. Did you have a question? Yeah, is it also because um, viruses are not permeable? Yeah, they're capsid. They're, it's just a wall. Okay. So, and they don't care. We like to say viruses aren't alive for a couple reasons. One, they don't reproduce on their own. Two, they don't respond to stimuli in the environment. So if there's no water, they're not going to change the way they act. Whereas bacteria, if they have too much salt inside the cell, so too much water, they'll actually start actively pumping out salt to get rid of the water. That, that's them responding, but viruses don't respond. They just act the same, no matter what. Because they can't act any other way, they're nothing. But they're pretty bad. Okay.